It's been 30 days since the outbreak. We finally managed to find some shelter. Killed literally thousands of walkers to get in here, but I had to find a way to send this message. I had to make this pie. Luckily, you don't need many ingredients to make this. Just a few stuff and things. Okay, we better get a move on. Let's pie. The first thing that needs to be done is the pastry. Short crust pastry needs at least 30 minutes in the fridge before you can use it. If you don't rest it, you're not giving the gluten enough time to work and it won't roll very well. Pastry you'll keep for about three days in the fridge or three months in the freezer, which is useful if you're actually still alive. Start with the fat. This should be at room temperature and it's completely up to you what type you use. I'm going for equal quantities of butter and lard. Then get your fingers in there and start gently rubbing it together at a height to create a breadcrumb texture. Make a well in the centre of the mixture and begin to pour in the water around two tablespoons at a time. Use a blunt knife at first and then once it starts to combine, get your hands back in. Lightly flour the surface, turn out the pastry, then knead it gently until it's formed a smooth ball. Then wrap it in cling film and chuck it in the fridge. Now the rhubarb. This isn't going to be a conventional pie as both of our components will be separate. But if you wanted to make this recipe as a normal pie, you can skip this step and just chuck your rhubarb in a dish raw with some sugar and let it cook all together. We don't make normal recipes however, so we're gonna boil down the rhubarb until it turns to a sinewy goo. Chugs up, family. Coral! <laughs> Prepare your 750 grams of rhubarb by chopping it into 1.5 inch chunks. If your rhubarb still has its leaves on, keep hold of them. Rhubarb leaves are slightly toxic, so you never know when you might come in handy. Chuck all that in a pan with 100 grams of sugar and whatever flavour you like. I'm going for a tiny bit of ginger with mine just to give it a little bit of fire and we'll also throw in some chopped pistachios towards the end. Now you just want to leave that to boil and reduce down until the rhubarb is soft, juicy and looks like walk innards. Whilst all this is going down, I'm going to roll out the pastry and get it in the oven. To get the brain shape for the pastry, we ordered a special mould, but you can just use a normal pie dish if you don't have one. Make sure you leave a bit of excess whenever you work with shortcut pastry because it tends to shrink quite a lot in the oven. Once you're happy with your case, prick it with a fork, pop some baking beans in and cook it for 15 minutes at 180 degrees. After those 15 minutes, take it out, take out the beans and cook it for five more minutes. I'm just gonna add some red food coloring and chopped pistachios for effect and then pour the filling inside the pastry case. Finally, grab a serving plate and very carefully flip it over. You can decorate the finished pie with whatever stuff and fangs you like. I'm going to quickly brush this one with some of the juices from the rhubarb, which I've just really quickly reduced down with some extra sugar. And there you have it, a rhubarb ginger and pistachio pie fit for a walker. Oh crap. As always, the full recipe and list of ingredients are in the description box below. And if you enjoyed this video, why not press subscribe and check out our previous Breaking Bad Blue Method recipe.